You, lucky listener, have discovered a spontaneous summer episode of Welcome to Fairmont, written and produced by me, Colleen Fries. I really wanted to make this so that I could experiment with how to make next year better, so I hope that you enjoy this change of pace. The final bell has rung. The school is empty, except for those of us who can't leave. Welcome to Fairmont. Listeners, if there are indeed listeners... This is your host, Psyche, reporting that it is the dead of summer here in the school, and by that I mean that these are the defunct days of summer when only the dead linger. Not even a trace of a janitor remains to hide in an unused classroom or janitor's closet. Since I am alone, I will be sharing the stories that the school often chooses to hide. I have spent some time on the collection of these stories. Information has a cost, as I'm sure you know. And it's not the cost of a good cup of coffee or even the price tag on the ability to drink it. But that is not why we're here today, is it? Today is for... I never hated her, you know. It's just that time. Well, relative to us, anyways. It... It changes people. And spend enough time around a person and you're bound to see things in them that you didn't see in the casual acquaintance. I'm not sure who it was, really, who started seeing things first, honestly. I, it, it could have been both of us, for all I know. Um, I, just, I just don't see things in the same light as her, I guess. Uh, did I ever mention that uh, we went to school together uh, back when we were alive? Yeah, we, uh, we died around the same time. That might have been why we became friends in the beginning, but we were in the same boat, right? And as it turned out, we had a lot of mutual friends. It was painful. Not really, the, the fact that I was dead, but that all the people who were still alive had no idea that we were here. Looking back, I'm not sure if it was worse to feel it myself or to watch it happening to someone else, too. We were acquainted when we still had blood in us. I mean... Yeah, uh, she she was a nice kid. Uh, never pain to be around. Quiet, really. Uh, so was I, for that matter. That might have been what led to our falling out, though, now that I'm thinking about it. I mean... I mean, neither of us ever voiced an opinion when we were in a crowd, and then, as ghosts, we could only really talk to each other. I'd like to think that we understand each other, yeah, but I'd, I'd even like to think that we were we were friends. It just doesn't seem like she can find it in her to respect me. Time was different then, I guess. Um, I guess she knows where to find me, though, when time changes again. You didn't tell me. Welcome back from that monologue from Florian, the theater ghost. That was the first of our associate-submitted soliloquies. This is the sort of thing we're here for today, and the school has certainly done a job of hiding that one. I don't even know how Lydia managed to get it. Oh, and that reminds me. Listeners, our wonderful zombie Lydia is here in the studio with me. It's nice to have a set of capable hands around to help out, you know? Today I have her running the board and loading all of our pre-recorded material. It was only recently that she was just starting to learn this stuff. It never ceases to impress me how quickly she picks it all up. It's all in the brains. And there you have it, listeners. It's all in the brains. At this point, I do need to move on to the current news bulletin, which would like to remind you that you need to be logged on with the director in order to make a radio appearance. It would also like to inform you that there has been a fatal automobile crash at the intersection of the Central and East Unit hallways. It happened at 4.07 this morning, and the scene has been cleaned up, but authorities are not releasing the names of those involved, since they cannot, in fact, prove that there was anyone involved. How can we prove that anyone was involved, Police Chief Kellogg told us, when there's no one to question? We can't even find the wreckage, he explained before brushing us off to continue his investigation. We will, of course, keep you updated on the situation should updates be released before I get off the air. In the meantime, Lydia, why don't you take us to our weather report? Good afternoon, Fairmont. This is Jack Carmody here to tell you that today is already a boiling salamander. That is to say, it is a defunct day, as they say, and the summer heat is just roiling everything. You'd better hope that you're buried at least six feet down if you're going to survive this one. That being said, it should cool off significantly with the drop of the sun at 5.30 this evening, though I wouldn't recommend going out in the Barsoomian night either. It would probably be best if you just stayed inside, really. 
Thank you for that insight, Carmody. It is now a little after 13 o'clock, and Lydia and I will be sending you off into our second monologue of the day. This is Conti. I mean, people like to think my whole unlife is dedicated to choir. It's not. Not really. I love it. I really do. But it's a lot of work, you know? Vampires are surprisingly high maintenance. And don't even get me started on the whites. Oh my god, and you can't even touch them. We all try to get along, especially since other people like to make assumptions about the vamps and entirely forget about the whites. And we wonder why we get no respect from the band and the orchestra. Sure, they've got plenty of undead members, but they don't do the same things we do. <clears throat> they don't have to push coffins around the building all the time. I do have an existence outside of here, you know. Well, I don't know if I can talk about what happens outside of the school. I don't think anyone really can. But hey, I've got other classes and friends that matter to me. See, I really want to become a chemist someday, so I obviously put a lot of effort into that class. It's like, well, there are always those sorts of people. The ones who have a passion for something academic. I always thought it was cool that it sort of spans social groups. It's just as weird to throw the physics nerds in with us chem geeks as it is to throw English into the science mix. I like to think we all have a respect for one another, though, you know? Sometimes it's like we all speak entirely different languages, and maybe the English kids do, but at the core we're all the same, looking for a greater understanding of something we care about. It's kind of like being a part of something. I wish I knew Conti better. I've only spoken to her the one time. Oh, and that one other time, but that's not a story for now. What is a story for now, however, is our update on the crash situation. As I said before, the site has been cleaned up, and it seems that there have been no injuries? Lydia, this can't be right. The first bulletin said it was fatal. It's the latest. True. Seeing as how this is the most recent update we have to offer, I think we have to believe it, listeners. I would hate to think our police force mistaken, even if it doesn't make sense. I was always told to meet everything with skepticism, except when the police are involved. I was never told what to do then. In other news, the bulletin reminds us that there is a new movie coming out this week, and it's supposed to be a blockbuster. It's called The Derelict of August, and has been in production for nearly 30 years. Very timely now, don't you think? Yeah. I'm trying to decide, listeners, what genre this movie is. The article I have here doesn't say, but it does say that it stars such famous personalities as Alice Hawkins and Fildry Ortuk, among others, and that it was rated a stark square on our recognized movie scale. I'm not sure that I will get the chance to see it for some time, but if you get to go out and watch this movie, I hope you'll enjoy it. And, on my next shift, I'll even take listener calls to talk about it. It's been a long time since we've gotten a new movie out here. I'm sure it'll be great. Okay, listeners, we have another monologue for you now from someone I'm sure we all know. This is Pond. Lydia? I know everyone's got secrets. I've been told a lot of them. Some of the things people hold on to. Grudges, guilt, you know, those sorts of things. Great space, some of those st things are stupid. Petty, maybe, is a better word. There was a story from a girl I haven't known for a long time about how she literally threw someone under the bus. It's silly, the little things people feel regret for. And you, the writer, you get it. Miss Freeze even wrote eulogies for handfuls of characters once. Thankfully, it wasn't anyone from our world. Though I honestly can't say they were written out of regret. Those things were snarky as... But you don't want to hear about the petty things, do you? That's not why you came to me. You came because we're friends and you wanted a story. We barely know each other, you say. Sure, maybe, in this world. Well, all information has a price. Some of it, well, now, it depends on what you're willing to pay. What your listeners are willing to pay. I know that anything I say here will be shared with them, so it's only fair that they share the price. But hey, we're friends, right? At least in another life. So this one's on the house, besides. I've wanted excuses to share this for a while. I've heard a bit about why no one remembers what happens outside the school. See, it's this thing where time flows differently here than anywhere else. We're disconnected from the rest of reality, you might say. I don't know if it's... Well, I'm not sure. I'm at liberty to even speculate here. But there's something wrong with time itself. You'd all do well to remember that. I have no idea what all that meant, but perhaps we should pay attention? Pond does trade in information, after all. It's a fascinating discipline and very pertinent to today's topic of storytelling. I'm afraid that was it for the monologues, but I do have one more thing to share with you before this defunct day is out. 
Before we get to that, though, I do have one final update on the crash that happened this morning. It has been determined that there was no one involved with the crash and that the bulletin was interpreting the wrong definition of the word fatal. It seems that this crash was always meant to happen, whether anyone was involved in causing it or not. It was not deadly, though may have been, had there been anyone at the site when it happened, but it was fated. As it is, the intersection of Central and East is still open for use, as it has been all day. Thank you to our anonymous reporters and Police Chief Kellogg for keeping us all informed throughout this investigation. Now that we have the story wrapped up, I'd like to introduce a special guest, listeners. Now in the studio, Lydia and I are joined by our friend and associate, Jack Carmody, whom you should all know from his enthusiastic narration of the weather. Welcome to the show, Carmody. It's not often you get to sit inside the station, is it? No, it's not. Thanks for inviting me in, Psych. You know, I could not have entered without your asking. Of course not. Would you be willing to talk about that today? What, my being a vampire? Of course. I don't particularly care who knows. Good for you. Some of us undead are a little, uh, shall we say, sensitive about their state of undeath. Now, I think the topmost question we have here is probably what drove you to report on the weather? People said I couldn't do it because I was a vampire, you know. It was something I was interested in before turning, and I had one too many people point out or joke about the sun being an issue. So I wanted to prove them all wrong. And... I will prove them all wrong again by saying that the sun isn't actually that big of a problem for me. What, do you sparkle? <laughs> no self-respecting vampire sparkles. Honey, our personalities shine like our eyes in the dark, but no self-respecting vampire sparkles. Especially not in the sun. It's not like I go out much anyway. I take my readings from inside, believe it or not. I've got some windows and a computer set up to take the readings I need for weather reports. I'm also only really awake when I need to be during the day. It's kind of hard to be naturally nocturnal and practically live at a school. I've been pushing for a shift to nighttime classes for decades now, and nothing's been done yet. Why didn't you ever tell me about that? You realize you work for a radio station, right? With other undead who might share your views? It's literally my job to talk at people and hope they listen. It's metaphorically my job to tell them what to think. You're on the air right now, so why don't you use that to say what you want people to hear? <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't need an invitation to speak my mind. Listeners, I've been wanting to say this for a long time, and I hope someone is listening who will be willing to help me get this done. We need classes that take place at night around here. Fairmont has long been a school that prides itself on its ability to find classes that fit its diverse student population. It's time this ability evolved and adapted to fit our growing numbers of undead. Most of us live in the afterlife, are nocturnal by nature. It's hard for us to be a part of our classes when they conflict so heavily with our instinctive sleep patterns. I've conducted studies and surveys that revealed that most of our undead population remains here at night, either by choice or by necessity, and that includes a percentage of the staff and faculty. Why can't we all have classes that are placed to enhance our school's nightlife and accommodate the needs of nearly half our student body? No one has ever been able to give me an answer to that. Wow, you've had that planned out for a while, haven't you? Ah, uh, yes. Yes, I have. Wow. Thank you, Carmody, for joining me today. Listeners, I'm afraid we're out of time to be connected through these waves. For now, at least, this has been Psyche. I wish you all the best, and of course, happy nightmares. This has been a continuation of Welcome to Fairmont, a WKET production written and produced by Colleen Fries and Alana O'Ryan. This episode was created by Colleen Fries with the voices of Cam Combs as Florian, Cameron Knopp as Jack Carmody, Colleen Fries as Psyche, Lydia Fries as her zombified self, Madeline Tathorn as Conti, and Olivia Weymouth as Pond. Thank you to everyone who took time out of their summer to help me record this, and to everyone who took time out of their lives to listen to this little experiment. I now have possession of your time. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel like I might actually exist. What is time, anyway? Why did you give some of yours to me? I'm sorry if you really wanted it. I'm afraid the investment's non-refundable. <laughs>